Really, really quickly before we get right into the video, um, I did want to let you guys know that I am actually on paternity leave. Therefore, uh, content that I put out right now is probably going to be a little bit different than usual. It might be a little lighter. There's probably going to be less B-roll. It might not be kind of the same Lord of the Board channel that you might know. Um, and that's just because of time constraints. This isn't my full time job. Um, there are uh, many, many ways that you can still support the channel. So uh, as I do go through this period, but some things that you can do that would greatly help me would be uh, any any form of support. I've got my Leader Games link if you haven't bought any of their products. I love them. I love what they do. I love all of their games. You can still use that link and that directly supports the channel if you use my link. Um, also, uh, liking my videos, subscribing to the channel, that just helps more people see my channel. That's always going to help. I get AdSense, so that all kind of comes through and gets usually put back into the channel and in games to cover, so. And I also have merchandise. It is awesome to see people wearing it at conventions. Um, and these are all accessible at thelordoftheboard.com. If you want to go ahead over there, you can check those out. I even have one that gives special rules for Root, which is just a fun thing to do during your game nights. Any of that is appreciated, but thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for caring about the channel and I will see you all on the flip side. Hello and welcome to Lord of the Board. My name is Sam and today we are going to be looking at some ways to instantly improve your root board game nights. Now I've been meaning to do a video like this for quite some time, but I just haven't and I'm, I'm really not sure why. I mean, these are some really, really easy things that you can do to improve the time that you're having with your friends around the table with my favorite board game, Root. So first off, let's start with number one. Now, number one is going to be something as simple as going to whatever music app you use. So you could be on Spotify or maybe Apple Music, it doesn't really matter. Whatever you're doing, you can look up kind of woodland board game soundtrack. I mean, I've got some links to some ones that I've found on Spotify. I use Spotify and a couple of good options. You can find a root playlist and it has some really, really nice ambient fantasy woodland music. Um, you can also look up uh, Everdell board game playlist. Everdell board game playlist and Root board game playlist, all of those, they will have the same kind of sound, which will be like fantastical, a little bit of whimsical, just some really, really fun stuff. And while you're checking out music though, ambient is what I prefer. There are definitely people that prefer other types of music. So I wanna shine a light to something that the Root community has put together that I think is really, really awesome. So Opie's Funeral, very, very popular in the Root community. He was actually able to kind of gather together a ton of people from the Root community to put together songs that are themed after Root. There are singing in this. Uh, there's some songs that don't have any words at all, but this is called Songs for the Woodland. There is a volume one and a volume two, and I would highly recommend checking those out. They can help you kind of get in the mood. And also some of them kind of sound like tavern songs that you might hear in the background of some woodland tavern along the road. So if you check out these playlists, I've got links to all of them down below, all of the ones that I'm recommending. So I hope you go ahead and check those out to improve your game night. Now, the second way is something that I love to do, but I know it's not for everyone, and that is to role play a little bit. And there are ways that you can do this without having uh, the Root RPG book, but I'm gonna talk about how I really do think that this would also help as well. But one of the things that I like to do is I like to find moments where I can create some sort of backstory to make a moment more special or more entertaining. I especially like to do this with async games online. And the reason for that is because sometimes it's hard to kind of feel like you are in the moment around the table with your friends. So we basically start a discord chat and we'll have a Discord chat basically for every single game of Root that I do in Async On, especially with my friends and such. And in these chats, I mean, there are tons of memes, tons of, uh, you know, just crap talking each other and all of that. We are literally roasting each other almost 24 seven. But another thing is that something that kind of emerges out of this is a sense of role playing where we'll kind of be yelling at each other in character in a way or make jokes about each other um, because of what animals we're playing in the game. And this can really improve kind of your immersion into the game of Root. It's something that I think I 
I generally <laughs> really, really um, advise that you try out. Uh, so I'll give you an example, a really quick one. But essentially, my friend had gone for an extremely well played out dominance play. And at the time of recording this video, I still don't know if they were able to pull it off. But I essentially had crafted a false orders a turn before I was the Woodland Alliance, of course. And it kind of came to the point where we had already stopped the first wave of the dominance play. And I'm talking like nine. Uh, rule in one clearing, 10 in another, maybe seven in another. It was pretty tough. And then they just had one mouse in the fourth mouse clearing going for that mouse dominance. But I had had false orders. My friend thought that they had it after we stopped the first attempt at winning by dominance. And uh, I had that false orders and I was ready to false order the one troop that was in the top left mouse clearing back into uh, a clearing that they didn't need to be in in order to stop the wave for a second time, which gives the Vagabond enough time to rest and then come back out and help stop it again. So they did not think about that, but I was so excited about it. And so I essentially was talking in the chat and I said, well, I have bad news. There was a secret Fox spy we Alliance committed to the war effort long ago. They started as a, as a youngling and grew within the Marquisate. He was appointed commander over a small brigade in the top left clearing of the Northern Mountain Spine. Yes, this is false orders. And I just like posted a picture of false orders in the chat and everybody's just freaking out like, no. Uh, and it, it ended up just being like such a memorable moment just because we were kind of like adding all this flavor text into an async game. Like that's kind of a cool thing that you can do to improve your game. So I really do think adding a little bit of, uh, you know, role play to your game sessions is really going to help. And one way that you can naturally do this is to acquire more knowledge about uh, Root. So there are actual literal texts that we can now use with the Root RPG. This is something that I highly recommend if you already have it and maybe even you don't intend to play it. I highly recommend reading everything you can in this, especially those lore sections, because those are going to give you a lot more stuff to work with when you are role playing these factions. So if you already have this, definitely read through them because that's going to help. But also always look for opportunities to make a moment in the game, a storytelling moment in order to create some really big and memorable stories. And the last thing that I will give you to instantly improve your root game night is actually going to be a mechanical improvement. And that is going to be Despot Infamy Vagabond, the rule change. Now, this is something that has been used in the tournaments. It was also used at RootCon. This is essentially a rule that makes it to where the Vagabond is going to be getting a lot less points in whenever they're doing uh, battles against hostile troops. So traditionally, they are gonna get one point for every warrior and an additional point for every token removed. That means that for every faction in the game, if a clearing has three warriors, two buildings, that is going to be worth two points for every faction in the game unless you're the Vagabond. If you're the Vagabond, we all know that that same clearing for the Vagabond is worth seven victory points. So a way to make it more fun for everyone. At least this has helped me. And like I said, all of these are just kind of personal to me. And I hope that this is gonna bring some value to you as well. But the new enhanced Despot Infamy rule essentially makes it so that you only score one victory point no matter how many pieces are removed. You're still going to get points for buildings and tokens, but you're not going to be getting basically a victory point for every single hostile piece. And it really makes the Vagabond kind of have to do other strategies. They can't just always resort to swords at the end of the game and essentially just swing at the end for that giant point surge. This, in my opinion, makes the game more fun. It will improve your root game nights. I highly recommend you try it. I've got a link down in the description where you can print that out. What we are gonna do is like keep an eye on those tournament results and maybe make very small tweaks so that players who want the really meaty competitive root can get, can get it. So like an example uh, of one of those, and I think the last tournament might have even used this, is the Vagabond getting only one point per battle where Infamy is in play as opposed to one per piece. 
like, you know, it shaves six points maybe off the Vagabond score at the end of the game. That's enough to put them at faction parity oftentimes. <laughs> and it, it's a real small, minor adjustment. Now, on the production side, folding that into every copy of Root that exists right. now is yeah. a complete nightmare. Mm -hmm. And also, folks may be surprised to learn, the Vagabond is not overpowered for the general audience. There is definitely backup for this rule, and I do think that you will have a better time playing with it. But hey, that's just me. I hope this video brought some value to you. And I want to hear your ideas. What are some of the things that you guys do in order to improve your root game nights? Are there any things that you guys add, like maybe house rules or maybe component upgrades, something that makes the game more interesting or maybe more unique to your table? I would love to hear your answers down below and I will see you down there. But that is it for the video. Let's go ahead and drop the beat. Yeah.